Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I've uploaded a video, I know. But now we're doing this, we're chilling. For a long time I thought about what this video should be about and I decided that I'm just going to rant about a few things that are going around in the witchy community right now, in the wellness community, in the spiritual community that are happening on social media. I just basically want to give my opinion about it for no reason, just because I like sharing my thoughts. I'm drinking a coffee. I know it looks terrible because it's soy milk and it got too hot. That's just how it is. And yeah, let's dive into it. The coffee is probably going to make me very energetic in the course of the video. So while I'm starting it tired, I will probably end it very excitedly. We will see. Okay, so in my social media bubble, I know that it probably looks very different from yours, which means that the things that I see, the content that I see, the content that I engage with, that is shown to me by the algorithm of Instagram, mostly Instagram, also YouTube, um, is going to be a lot different from what you see, which means if I refer to things now where you're like, what, that's a thing, that's part of the discourse, I didn't know, then... Your bubble is probably different from mine, and if I don't say some things that you feel that were kind of burning topics within the last months or weeks on social media, feel free to also let me know in the comments because I, you know, am very aware of the fact that we all have our own little bubbles, depending on what creators you interact with, depending on uh, what posts you like, depending on what posts you comment on, you are shown different things, which means that in the end, we all have our own little bubble. I said the word bubble like four times in this video already um, that we engage with in terms of content. So yeah, let me know what is going on in your bubble. I'm going to talk a little bit about what is going on in mine. So the first thing that I want to talk about in the witchy community or the spiritual community or the mental health community, whatever you want to call it, some people call it the wellness community, I guess, is boundaries. Because I feel like there has been a little bit of a revolution when it comes to how people see boundaries, how they set boundaries, how they perceive boundaries. Because the whole discourse was very, very colored by the fact that most people who struggle with boundaries are overgivers. And if overgivers make content about boundaries, it is bound to be, <laughs> it is bound to be more focused on struggling with setting them and how to set them firmly, how to set them with confidence. Now, I think that's legitimate, absolutely, but it also leads to a little bit of a extreme where I feel like sometimes um, it is overstated a little bit how harsh you have to be with your boundaries, that they are basically completely, um, you know, electric fences that nobody can get close to and you don't question them if it's your boundary, if you feel like that about it, you don't change it, you don't compromise on it. Now there is validity to that, especially if you were kind of on the other end of the spectrum of having no boundaries, saying never no to anyone, letting anyone do whatever they wanted with you, then I understand that this approach is very uh, attractive. But now I feel like it's becoming a bit more nuanced. In general, I feel like social media is becoming more nuanced, which is very necessary, but also, um, kind of hard to deal with for a lot of people, if we're honest. So what I want to say is that the boundaries discussion is coming into more of a middle ground, I feel, where it is also a part of your practice to question your boundaries. It's not just a part of your practice to think about what bothers you, think about what makes you uncomfortable, but also to think about which boundaries maybe need to be pushed a little bit backwards, which boundaries maybe need to be opened up completely for you to grow. Because the thing is, some boundaries, they are legitimate, they protect our path, they protect our energy, they protect our well-being, while other boundaries are set out of a uh, sense of fear and out of a sense of limitation that we feel like we should stick to, you know? It's a comfort zone that we create for ourselves. And it always needs to be questioned 
whether the boundary that you are setting is based on actual like, okay, this is essential for my well-being or if it's something that you are really just setting out of fear. Now, I think there's a time and a place for everything. So I think it's totally legitimate to use fear or wanting to preserve your comfort zone as a reason for setting a boundary. But I also think that then when it comes to your boundary practice and your reflection, your self-reflection, you should be able to um, change it as well and reflect on it and be like, okay, maybe it's time to soften that boundary a little bit. Maybe that's not um, supposed to be such a hard boundary anymore if I still want to grow. So yeah, I think it's challenging, but it's possible. And I think that it's a good development that the boundary discussion is becoming more nuanced in this way. And that we are not just advocating for very harshly setting boundaries with your family, with your friends, uh, with loved ones, but also thinking about maybe when they breach your boundaries, when they question your boundaries, or when you notice your boundary is too firm, that it is a good impulse to maybe question it and maybe uh, take it down a notch. Now, as always, we just have to be honest with ourselves in that work, why we set a firm boundary, why we want to soften it, etc., etc. So as with everything, as long as you do it consciously and um, yeah, as long as you do it consciously, I feel like you don't open yourself up to mistakes so much in that respect because you can always rework it. You can always change it again. And it's just a matter of trying, you know, it's a matter of trying and not just closing yourself off completely from the world and saying, no, 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 everyone is hurting me. Everyone is bad for me. Stay away. Um, because that is probably not what is going to make many people happy and content in their life in the long run. So yeah, that was about boundaries. It's not the best coffee I ever made, but it's strong. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is questioning people on Instagram who put out wellness content, who put out mental health content. I feel like there are many uh, creators, including professional psychologists, who spread information that is not exactly helpful. Um, and that can lead people down a path of not really accepting themselves the way they are, I'm not going to name names here because I think if you're in the same bubble as me, maybe you already know like which psychologists are being questioned here. Um, the point is, I think it's good that there are people who are calling, whether it's professional psychologists or other influencers, out on their shit. Because especially in the spiritual community, it's so full of, you know, just quotes quotes, quotes, quotes that are short, that are meant to make you feel powerful. And I think that's not always the best way to approach things. And there's two things I want to say here um, that I think are problematic. Number one are those kinds of quotes that are really, really intensely individualistic and um, kind of like have this fuck the world vibe, if you know what I mean. Kind of like this, whoa, you're a strong, incredible, no fucks given, warrior princess, live your fire, light your candle, whatever. You know what I mean? That was a bad representation, but you probably understand what kind of quotes I'm talking about. Now, the issue with this is that if we're all like completely cool, awesome, badass warriors, then there would be no reason to do any work. So it's kind of just circumventing the work a little bit to pump yourself up and move on and do what is necessary in life, but you kind of do it out of a false sense of pumped up confidence. And I don't like that so much. Whereas, you know, I do enjoy that, like with epic shit, with legendary shit like that, you can definitely get me. But I think for some people, uh, it goes a little bit too far. I identify with it, but I don't think that I'm actually like that. It's kind of like a persona, you know? It's not so much that I think, okay, I'm actually perfect and actually nobody can question me and actually I'm not going to give nothing to nobody who doesn't respect me and all these things, you know? Like these very harsh 
um, you deserve everything. This was one of the best posts I've seen lately that talked about the you deserve everything attitude, um, saying that you shouldn't accept anything from other people if they don't give you what you need. You deserve everything. Search for someone else. I don't like this narrative at all because honestly, other people aren't there to just fulfill your needs. That's not a community-oriented thought. It's a very individualistic thought. And I've been having my issues with individualism in this year of 2020 and the individualism that is basically uh, the, the biggest thing in capitalism and in Western society. So I have my issues with that. Um, and I think that sometimes this leads you down a path. These kinds of argumentations lead you down a path of believing that you deserve everything and as soon as someone doesn't fulfill everything that you want, you are allowed to cut them off. And as soon as someone doesn't accept you exactly the way you are, you are allowed to cut them off, you know? It's very self-centered in that way. Now that's the first thing. The second thing is stuff like diagnoses like narcissism or emotional addiction or codependency. Now, what I find problematic about these three and what I'm glad is being questioned on social media is that there are a lot of things that are absolutely normal in the human mind and that are a natural part of being human that you can love about yourself, that you can slightly change if you want, if it's better for you, but that are not pathological behaviors. And something like emotional addiction, which is about um, re-engaging with emotionally intense situations in your memories in order to get an emotional fix, that's a really problematic concept because most people do that. And it's not, it's not really a bad thing unless you literally sit there every day for five hours and do that and it's inhibiting your life like a real addiction does. Um, or something like codependency where it's like, yes, you are in a relationship and it's actually completely natural that sometimes your partner's needs have a higher priority for you than your own. It's actually completely normal that you want your partner to love you and that you expect things from them. Whereas these narratives often try to spin it that all of that is codependency. As soon as you do anything for your partner or uh, feel resentful that you did something for your partner or feel alone and expect them to help you like you help them, like immediately it gets labeled as codependency. And I don't think that's really useful. I think it's something that everyone can work on on an individual level. And I think that's important. What it comes down to, I feel like, is that sometimes we refuse to see what is human about us and we try to just be robots or just be individuals completely cut off from everything else and I recently saw a post by someone that I really like I followed this guy for a while and he posted something that said the most resilient people he's ever seen are people who don't refuse things that are human within themselves or something like this I will put up the quote here because I'm misquoting <laughs> um, and I think that was a very very smart thing because I can 100% back that claim up. I think people who accept everything within themselves as human, accept their struggles as human, accept their emotions as human, instead of suppressing them and saying, I shouldn't feel like this, I should be doing this. Those are the most resilient people because they have kind of the stoic mindset of like, yeah, all of this is basically normal, you know, all of this is just how I am and it's fine. So I think um, this is a very valuable perspective and something to really, uh, keep in mind to accept your humanity and accept what is human within you and not take it so hard, not belittle yourself for having feelings or having struggles, but rather just, you know, living through it, going through it, feeling through it. And then your resiliency is much, much higher than if you additionally to all your struggles doubt that you should be feeling something or think that you should be doing something even though you are not able to. And this goes both ways, by the way. This is a thought now that is going to be a little bit complicated, so stay with me. Uh, I had a conversation once with someone 
that was very interesting because he did something. I was like, wow, cool. You should give yourself credit for that. And he was like, no, why, why would I give myself credit for that? And I was like, oh, well, because, you know, you did something, you achieved something. It's good. You should give yourself credit so you feel good about it. And he was like, well, but if I give myself credit for this, if I don't do it, then I don't get credit. Then I question myself. Then I wasn't good enough. And I was like, oh, yeah, he's right, actually, because our mind works both ways in a lot of ways, I feel like. Because if you start giving yourself credit for being productive or being a good functional human being, then you are going to, or your mind may, let's say your mind may tend towards taking away credit or thinking that you are not good enough if you are not able to do those things. And if you are not able to deliver or be productive or all of these things, and I was like, oh, wow. And he meant this from the heart, you know, that is the most fascinating thing. He was like, why would I give myself credit? Because it's just a normal thing. And if I give myself credit for this, then not doing it will make me feel bad next time. I was like, whoa, mind blown. And I actually kind of agree with that perspective. So yeah, it's difficult because I don't want to say never give yourself credit for anything or don't pump yourself up. But at the same time, there is some truth to this and it is worthy to question this mindset within ourselves, I think. The third thing I want to talk about is shadow work and astrology, which have become quite trendy, actually. You know, when I go on my YouTube, I usually don't get so many suggestions for beginner videos or 101 videos. Recently, I decided to click on a shadow work 101 video because sometimes I think the basics can be inspiring or the basics can help you, you know, tune back into the work. And then I proceeded to get so many how to start shadow work, uh, shadow work 101, shadow work basics videos. And I'm not going to say I watched all of them because I really didn't. But my impression is that many people are talking about shadow work that actually neither have much experience with shadow work themselves, nor know that much about the theory of it. And I'm not going to say that I've never been guilty of this. I like talking. I like passing on knowledge. So 100% I have been guilty of talking about things that I'm not experienced with and that um, I don't know an abundant amount about, you know? But I think at least I try to make sure that my content doesn't lead people down wrong paths or anything like that. Um, and by wrong paths, I mean that it's not harmful to them or that the perspectives are harmful to them or the techniques or whatever I use, you know. Now, I don't feel so good about that, about the fact that many people are talking about it now. And I don't want to sound like gatekeepery. I kind of posted about this on Instagram as well. I don't want to sound like, oh, these people know nothing and they try to instruct people. But it's true. It's um, true that many people online try to instruct others in something that they have no idea about themselves. As I said, not excluding myself here and many other people, but still... Hmm, I don't know. Let me know how you feel about that. Let me know how you think about that. Because I'm a bit undecided. Because on one hand, I think, yeah, it's good that shadow work and astrology are getting spread more. At the same time, it's misinformation. But whoever is really interested in it is going to work with it and going to find their, path, their own path with it. So maybe it's not so bad. I don't know. Now, the fourth thing I want to talk about is the whole alcoholism online thing because I feel like it's lessened which I'm very happy about but so many people made jokes about becoming alcoholics in quarantine and I understand on the one hand yes I understand that it's kind of funny to talk about but at the same time I'm like what <laughs> because the West, Europe, America, 
this is like the cultural hotspot for normalizing alcohol and normalizing alcoholism or putting the threshold of what alcoholism actually is very, very high. And I didn't feel comfortable or good about all of the memes going around that are supposed to be funny about drinking a bottle of wine every day or even just drinking a glass of wine every day, however much, I don't know. Um, yeah, I didn't like that because honest to God, if we keep normalizing alcohol like that, and if we keep um, acting as if it's a funny thing to get drunk or as if it's a funny thing to drink every day and not a problematic thing, as long as we do this, I think it's going to be a problem. It's just going to be a problem because you see it everywhere. You know, this is the reason why people in movies don't smoke anymore. People in movies used to smoke all the time until, I mean, unless you are watching a French movie, they still smoke like chimneys. But in other movies, like Hollywood movies, you don't really see it anymore because it has been kind of recognized that the more you normalize it and the more you show it, the more people will have the urge to do it. It's just like seeing someone eat and you won't have the urge to eat something, you know? And it's kind of the same for me with alcohol, with cigarettes, stuff like that. And I don't think it's a good thing that there are just so many memes about it as if it's okay to drink every day. And it's like, I get it. We all have our problematic numbing patterns that help us get through something as stressful as quarantine. And I'm not trying to shame anyone for it, but I think we also have to be present with the fact and sit with the fact that this is not a good thing. It's not good for our health, neither our mental health nor our physical health. And that doesn't mean that we can't ever do it and that we can't use it as a protective coping mechanism for a while or to get through a hard phase. But we do have to question it. We do have to think about it, I think. That's where the nuance kind of comes in with this. Let me know how you think about this because, I don't know. I know that in the West, alcohol is so normalized that people don't even notice this stuff. But for me, it was a little bit jarring. Okay, so last point, actually. Remember to let me know in the comments what you have been seeing on social media, what's been bothering you, what you've liked in the course, in the discourse and so on. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the whole feminine masculine thing, because I find this whole discussion very interesting. And I feel like the bubbles who criticized each other have kind of separated. Because on one hand, you have the bubble of people who don't believe in a construct of gender, and they consider the feminine masculine dichotomy, even though it's not about female and male, they still consider this as a problematic concept that is rooted in society, that should be eradicated, etc., etc. Um, there's that bubble on one hand, and then you have the bubble of people who are very much into the feminine masculine aspects, saying like, oh, all of us have these within ourselves, we have to balance them, they work with goddess, they work with God, whatever. And I feel like these people don't fight much anymore, you know what I mean? Because I used to feel like they were kind of out to get each other beforehand, um, especially when it comes to a sensitive topic like gender. But maybe this is just because I am not in the right uh, bubble, because I have a little bit of both bubbles going on in my feed, independently of what I believe myself. Um, and there's like no issues between them, <laughs> but maybe that's just me. Let me know what you think of this, because I feel like there was a time when there was a lot of criticism going on, um, from the side of, you know, people who don't want gender stereotypes to influence their life, their spirituality, their everything. And the people who firmly believe that in order to realize our true potential, we have to have feminine and masculine aspects within ourselves and have to work on that. Now, what I'm excluding, obviously, is the people who think that women should be feminine and men should be masculine, but I don't see much of that 
anymore, I guess. I just see women who tune into their femininity and their masculinity and men who tap into their masculinity and their femininity. Let me know, like maybe this is just my bubble. Let me know what's been happening in yours and how, if there's any discussion or any issue going on between those two worlds for you. At this time, I'm not going to speak about my own beliefs about this because I think that would like become a huge discussion at the end of the video. And this is already 27 minutes long as I'm speaking here. So yeah, that's basically it. I'm really happy to do this. I like doing this because, you know, thoughts just kind of get trapped in my head. So I figured it would be good to let them out, let them free and kind of talk to you guys about that. Okay. Thank you. I was looking at my list if there's anything else, but there's not. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to watch any of my other videos. And I hope that you enjoyed this. And I'm really trying to put out more content. I have a Patreon where I'm more active than here at the moment because I don't have so much time, unfortunately. And yes, thank you so much. I wish you the best of weeks, the best of days, and I will see you very, very soon.